Welcome to this experiment on rotational vibrational spectroscopy. The purpose of this pre-lab is to introduce you to some of the underlying principles explaining why we observe the types of spectra we do in this experiment. An important thing to note at this stage, you will cover spectroscopy in full and glorious detail later in the year. The purpose of this experiment is not to supplement that. It is to demonstrate how we can use spectroscopic data of any form for finding out information about molecular structure. Therefore, don't worry if you have a lot of concepts that seem difficult at this stage. Our goal here is to build on spectroscopy as you have covered it in year two. To help you with the analysis of your data, there is a post-lab video showing the analysis protocol for carbon monoxide, and you simply have to follow a similar approach here. In this experiment, we look at gas phase spectroscopy. Gas phase is an interesting and exciting area because it means we often see very highly resolved spectra as the molecule's energy levels are not distorted by solvent interactions. Vibrational spectra in the gas phase often have these symmetrical shaped arrangements of peaks. We'll explain the reason shortly, but more importantly, how we can use the information therein. We'll be looking at single molecules, but there are lots of applications. Here is a spectrum of cigarette smoke. We can use this to easily identify many nastic and toxic compounds in cigarette smoke. This approach is also used to study interstellar gases. It is so sensitive we can detect very small amounts and hence deduce their composition. Why are we seeing spectra that take these forms? The reason lies in the various transitions that are possible. When a molecule vibrates, its vibration energy levels are quantized. In other words, as the molecule vibrates more and more, these vibrations are of defined energy and are represented by higher and higher energy levels. This is shown in the animation. As the higher and higher energy levels are selected, these higher energy levels correspond to the molecule vibrating more and more intensely. Quantized energy levels means that only these energies are available to the molecule. Vibration intensities in between are not. Because of the both band distribution, we are mostly concerned with transitions from the V is equal to zero vibrational state to the V is equal to one vibrational state, or what is called the fundamental absorption. Now things get interesting. As well as vibrating, a molecule can also rotate. Again, we can represent a molecule rotating faster and faster by assigning increasing energy levels to these rotational states. And again, these are quantized. We see that unlike vibrational states, the ground rotational state represents no rotation. As higher and higher rotational states are populated, this reflects the faster and faster rotation of the molecule. The term B is the rotational constant and is of similar importance to the force constant in vibrational spectroscopy. Rotational transitions involve a change of rotational state of 1. So you can see because of the different energies between them, this results in a series of transitions of increasing energy. You should be able to begin to relate this now to the types of spectra we see involving rotational transitions. Because the molecules vibrate and rotate simultaneously, we need to consider both in looking at transitions that occur. This is discussed more formally in the post-lab video, but for now we can consider this graphic. We restrict our consideration to the V is equal to 0 to the V is equal to 1 fundamental absorption. Observing a selection rule that the rotational quantum number must change by 1, we can see that a series of transitions of increasing energy and of decreasing energy are possible. These directly correspond to the transitions we see in the spectra. Moreover, we can deduce the molecular information about the molecule under study because the rotational constant relates to molecular parameters such as reduced mass, bond length, etc. This is described more fully in the post-lab. So for now, in approaching this lab, your focus should be on the fact that we can acquire these spectra very easily experimentally and that with great care, noting the transition energies observed, we can use that data to determine molecular constants. The post-lab video describes a full worked example for the analysis of carbon monoxide, which should help you in the analysis of your data here for HCL.